hello I hope you are doing great thank you for waiting so today we are going to continue working adding some additional requirements for the blazer restaurant system if you have been following the series you know that we are developing a system oriented for restaurants such as Pizza Hut, Subway, Burger King, McDonald's and the other um, to have orders online and do the delivery too, right? This is created in Blazor Web Assembly and is, is a 100% uh, open source project which is in the GitHub repository and the link is in the video description. Now before I continue please remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share them and invite more people to like the channel too. Also if you want to see all of my links they are centralized in all my links.com slash and that URL the URL is also in the video description so you can check it and there are a lot of links for digital trainings uh, the Twitter account link, uh, link profile uh, how you can hire my services and also there are some uh, books in there you can go to my Amazon author page you can get by the books that are in there right. so let's start What things we want to add to the system, right? Um, so we have already a lot of functionality functionality implemented, but there is always things that we may want to add. So if you have any ideas, you can tell, but I already have some of the uh, tasks we want to add in here. Okay, so there are things, for example, we want to do tracking all of the API requests. So they are persisted and we can see what how the system is being used, right? And this must also include uh, the user information if the user is authenticated, right? So. system will lock all of the API requests the request the lock must include the following information and here we want to add the client IP address. We want to add the daytime, right? Actually, yeah. Daytime in UTC. And let's put the daytime offset UTC. Okay. We also want to add the Requested URL. Request URL. Request headers. Request body. Okay. We also want to log the response. Let's see. If we want. Actually, we may not want to add the response in there. The request. Yeah. So, user information, um, application user ID, right? Which is going to be the ID <coughs> for the record belonging to the user, right? Uh, if the user is authenticated, otherwise that would be null and 
it will mean that the user is the user um, hasn't logged in yet, right? Let's see what else we want to have in there. We have the request, we have the headers, we have the body, we have the user information, AI originator info interface columns. We want to have that just to do some auditing. And I believe that's everything we need. If you know anything that we might want to add in there, you can put it in the comments. So I'll submit this and that will be the tracking all API request. So that's one of the requirements that we'll add in the application. Okay, so let's see what else we want to add in here. We also want to do client side login. Okay, so this is the tracking all API requests, right? This runs this part runs in the server side, right? But remember this application is a Blazor Web Assembly application. It has a client side and a server side. The server side is the one which is hosting the APIs and it will log all of the requests to the API. But there are certain actions that happen only on the client side that we may also want to log. So let's see, we want to add the client side login. Client side login. Okay. The system must log the actions users are. Um, executing and actually we will do this in another way we will do two things this will be for client side error login system must log all of the errors that occur in the client side right uh, the log must have the following information. We want to have the error message, right? We want to have the yeah exception message. stack trace the um, URL yes I think we can get that yes that's the page URL what else we want to track in there application user ID we also want to have that to be able to link to the user and in case we want to contact them um, we already have them in the system and with the application user ID we can link the error to that user and request for more information in case we need it or fix any issues that they may have in the order due to this exception right so this allows us to be a little bit more proactive if there are any errors in the system. Um, let's see what else we may need in there. Exception message, the stack trace, the page URL, and the, oh yeah, the daytime, of course. Daytime upset, and that will be in your TC too. And yeah, we will also Originator interface, originator info interface columns. So th those will be, that will be all of the data that will be persisted into the database. 
later on we, we will create the task for creating the tables that we may need for that right so we already have the client site error login in here so let's go to issues and see tracking all the API requests and client site error login and yeah those are the base for this those will probably convert it in milestones or something and we create more issues so we also want visitors tracking okay implement visitors tracking okay so we may need to know how the system is being used right for example we may want to know uh, which are the orders the products I'm sorry that the users visit the most right uh, in case we add product pages and things like that uh, we basically want to know the pages the users are visiting so we can check um, if we need to change anything in there if we have for example products specific pages with the details we want to know which products they are visiting because that will give us enough information enough information about um, the products that we may want to sell more of right or promote in a better way and things like that right also if there are products that are not visited in certain time right or certain pages uh, we may need to change those pages with uh, to have more visibility or remove them at all right there are things like that uh, so visitors tracking combined with some order analysis that we will implement later on uh, will be a very good tool to analyze to have enough data to analyze the sales and everything so let's see system must um, lock all of the visits to pages so this will be something uh, similar to the Google Analytics but this will be specific to the system itself that will be um, created using pure blazor components and we won't use any JavaScript for that okay so we need the IP address actually it's pretty similar to the other except that this is not for errors this is just for visiting pages right page URL application user ID IP address daytime offset this is going to be in UTC we also want the I originator info interface columns and I believe that's everything that we need for this one Now we are doing uh, error logs, so we want to create the Power BI report for error log. Remember that the system currently supports two modes, right? For error, for viewing the error logs, one is in the system itself, right? and the other will be through uh, through a Power BI report, right? So this task will be the one where we are going to create the Power BI report and we will publish it, get a URL that we will consume in the system. 
this will not have like a lot of details because it's pretty much self-explanatory. Okay. Now there are certain things that we want to add in the orders tool. So let's see if we can uh, check. Okay, in the system when we create or when a user creates an order, it's currently uh, it's currently in a draft mode, the UI, right? But um, it will it allows you to select the geolocation where the order is going to be delivered, right? But we want also to, and that is actually show you showing you a map when you are creating the order itself, right? But if you have used applications like um, Uber Eats, for example, you know that when the order is being processed or when it is going to be delivered to you and the route is already assigned, you will be shown with the map with the delivery guy right at some point in the map and your uh, order delivery point right so we want to implement something like that into the application so we will implement a the order tracking right or the the order progress I have still don't know how to call how to call that and we will have a map actually showing you the delivery route right now it's not going to be um, it will have some additional modifications or enhancements because at some point we are also going to implement uh, a route optimization logic some external uh, probably natural functions and that will optimize the routes and it will take in account if it is possible for one delivery person to deliver multiple orders in less than 30 minutes right so it will show you the optimized route for those delivery points right but we also want to show you things like the some icons for the weather that is in those specific points in the route that the delivery person has right so for example if in this if you have points a b and c and point b uh, and this is snowing in point b we want to show a snow icon in there so you know that that may represent an issue and that they may that whether um, whether you unexpected or a little bit uncomfortable let's say um, weather for deliveries might represent a problem right um, or it might not right it just depends on the weather but we want to show some we want to show some map with the icons in there so we will add that so I am going to create the um, or the delivery roadmap right there are a couple of things we want to do one is add the order delivery map So this is a must allow users to see a map with the order delivery route. The map must show whether show the correct weather icon for each of the points in the route okay
now some thing else that we want to do is we want to enable the localization and actually I'm not sure if it's already created let me check Table profile. Okay, I don't think we have that one yet. So enable local localization for both the client and server apps okay so remember that we have two applications the Blazor WebAssembly which is the client side and the Blazor uh, the .NET Core hosted API right so we need to enable localization in both must allow users to select the language in which they want the site to be displayed right now there are a couple of things that we may that we um, we need to be aware of right um, the there are two applications so when you select your language in your client site it will not update the language or by default it will not update the language in your server site you have in every request to the server site specify the actual language you want it to return things on right because there are a couple of things we have the client side resources which are going to be in your client application right and you will have things like text for the web pages and things that are static in there in case we add resource files you will have resource files in there and those could be automatically uh, not translated but um, retrieving the corresponding language if you use resource files right um, but the server site will need to understand or get a tip of the language that the user selected so the server site changes the thread culture for that specific request in the server site and it can later continue retrieving all of the required information from the server in the corresponding language right and that will vary on how to do it depending on the data we are actually getting right so we need to do a couple of things um, hello okay we already mentioned this make sure the make sure all of the requests to the server site have the correct language header language header corresponding to the user selected language right or culture let's say because it's actually a culture what we are going to to allow Make sure all of the requests to the server side. Okay. Make make sure the server side um, changes the thread culture to the 
culture or language selected by the user in the client side application or system, right? Make sure all of the text data is returned in the language selected by the user of the text date way of that text uh, make sure all of the text data make sure all of the text data from the server side is um, returned in the language selected by the user okay we are going to submit that requirement too right and let's see what else we want to add in here okay remember that when we implemented the products we created um, product types right and the product types are for example if they are beverages if, uh, pizza pasta uh, sandwiches right fish meat things like that so we want to um, add some additional menu items in the landing page or in the home page corresponding to those um, product types so when you click them it will show you a list or some IMS based links for the product uh, products of those specific types right so I, I leave a bit, I, uh, like a little enhancement in the online menu so add product products type product types product types menu menu items in the landing home or home page right okay one more thing that we may want to add in here is um, a point system right so for example sometimes when we order uh, online food to specific restaurants we have and we have our um, order already created the more we order products the more points we get and then we can exchange those points for some things like discounts in future orders right so we are going to implement this we are going to allow all of the users to have a point system and we are actually avoiding uh, having VIP membership created right so we don't have like an additional step in there however we are going to have uh, an expiration time for the points is going to be of six months so if you haven't used your points in more than six months those points will expire and you will start getting points again but from zero so I'll create a new issue here and let's see how we name this we are going to do or to name it add point system for users okay system system must have a point points based um,
I don't want to repeat the word system. <sighs> Allow for a points based system. System. The points will be exchangeable for discounts in um, orders. So one of the things that usually um, that some points based system do is after you buy for example let's say you buy a um, you buy something you get a point for um, for each dollar you spend on an order right so for example if you order a pizza and let's say that it um, it has a cost of ten dollars let's say you will get ten dollars for that order but if you want to get a free pizza you have a rate of um, ten times the price of the order right so for example you will need uh, 100 points in order to be able to exchange them for a ten dollar pizza right so use a extend rate I'll name it like that rate for exchanging exchanging uh, orders exchanging points okay and let's see am I missing something in there oh yeah the expression the points must be used or actually the points will or must expire every six months okay so one of the ways we are going to do this is we are going to add actually I believe we already have it when we create the user uh, we are going to take as a base that date right and is six months after that date we will um, expire the, the orders or we may just expire them and actually we will probably just expire all the points at a specific um, date static play time uh, let's say John first every year yeah John first every year and December 6th, no December 1st every year let's do that that's actually way easier to do it and I believe it's fair okay let's see and that will be basically it what we are going to add for today let us know any more uh, feature requests that you may want to have into the system remember that the system is actually uh, something that has the purpose to um, or has the objective not only to be an educational project but also work as a base for a system that could be used by real restaurants right uh, you could even sell it at some point, right? Or make a business from it. Um, yeah, that would be basically it. Thank you very much. And remember to share the channel and the videos and like them and invite your friends so they can keep learning more. Thank you very much and have a great day.